Okay. So let's see about the measures used in clustering. So there are uh, like various distance measures uh, used in clustering. Okay. So first one is the Minkowski distance, Manhattan distance, and Euclidean distance. Okay. These are the three di uh, distance measures used in clustering algorithms. Okay. And all these three distance measures are related to one another. Okay. First, we'll deal with Manhattan distance. Okay, so the formula for uh, computing Manhattan distance between the two points, okay, is summation of Q minus P. I mean, Q and P are the two different points, okay. So, summation of Q minus P. So, here we have X1 is 1, comma 2, X2 is 3, comma 5. So, I am computing the distance, okay. So, here I am taking this, um, this variable 3 minus 1. Okay, and I am taking the uh, next one, next point, pi minus 2. Okay, so I am computing the distance between the two points and then I am and then summing it up. Okay, so it is 5. Okay, so the formula for Manhattan distance is summation of qi minus pi. Okay, for Euclidean distance, the formula is the same. I mean, when you have two points, it's q minus q minus p whole square summation of qi minus pi whole square so we are just like uh, dealing with only two points right now okay x1 is 1 comma 2 again and 3 comma 5 is x2 okay so we have two points so let's compute the distance 1 minus 3 minus 1 whole square plus 5 minus 2 whole square so 2 square plus 3 square so you'll get 3.61 Okay, so here you have the same points. See the x1 and x2 values are the same, but the Euclidean uh, distance is 3.61, whereas the Manhattan distance is 5. Okay, so here what is the uh, difference is like you are squaring the uh, uh, deviations, I mean the difference, and then you're taking a square root. Okay, so the x1 is Minkowski dis uh, distance here. Summation of Q mi qi minus pi power x and to the whole power of 1 by x okay so it's also the difference between the two points you're summing it up and and you have power x to the power of 1 by x actually you have, have a very good relationship between this three distance measures okay manhattan euclidean and minkowski okay so if you step, substitute x equal to 1 this distance measure becomes Manhattan, okay? And if you like substitute x equal to two, the distance measure becomes Euclidean, okay? So if x is a one, it is a Manhattan distance. If x equal to two, the formula becomes a Euclidean distance, okay? So we have some illustration on how to compute Euclidean distance from uh, diagrams, okay? So you have a point x, j1 and j2, x i1 and i2 okay so if you want to like compute the distance actually you can like from here it comes to the this point and then here okay so that uh, the, to compute the points uh, distance between these two points is x i2 minus x j2 and here x i1 minus x j1 okay so according to the pythagoras theorem you can like say we can actually like derive the Euclidean distance formula. Okay, and when you like sum this to, sum, sum this two, you, you get the Manhattan distance. Okay, when you sum this two distance, it becomes your Manhattan distance, and when you like uh, substitute values here, it becomes your Euclidean distance. Okay, so if for Manhattan distance, I mean, for example, you have a fire uh, uh, here, and then you have a fire track, and and if you want to like uh, and if you're in the fire track and you want to reach uh, the fire place, so you can like go straight, okay, here across the streets, actually, which is not possible at all. So this becomes your, when you, when, when you have a way, you can like go reach that, that becomes your Euclidean distance, but if you, but you're a fire track, so you have to like travel to the um, roads, not on the air. So you have to like, if you're like choosing this, path this red line so that is becomes your manhattan distance 
Okay, the green line is your Euclidean distance. So we have some mathematical requirements for a distance function. Okay, uh, so distance of i comma j, it should be like greater than or equal to zero. I mean, distance between any two points, i and j is a, any two points, okay? So distance between any two points should be greater than or equal to zero. And distance of i comma i is equal to zero. I mean, the distance between the same point, it should be zero. The distance of an object to itself is always zero, okay? And d uh, distance of i comma j is equal to d uh, distance of j comma i, which says that I mean the distance within two points is always the same irrespective of the order. I mean it says I mean there is a symmetry to this distance function. Okay, this function the distance function is symmetrical. Okay, so we can like prove this. Uh, symmetrical function in the uh, in the forthcoming slides as well I'll, I'll show you how it is symmetrical okay okay so and i have distance of ij it should be less than or equal to distance of i comma h plus distance of h comma j so we have like two points the summation uh, when you like sum those two uh, points the distance of two points you will be like able to get the another point so that is a uh, another rule which is called triangular inequality. This is a little complicated and it will not be like hold true in all the cases. Okay, this holds only true on certain occasions. Okay, so this is the thing I told you earlier. So the formula for man, uh, Minkowski dis uh, distance is like here, the illustration is different. It's instead of PQ, we have xi1 minus xj1 to the power of p plus xi2 minus x j2 power p it goes on until the nth item okay and becomes one by p if p becomes one it becomes your euclidean distance if p becomes uh so if p becomes one it becomes your manhattan distance p becomes two it becomes your euclidean distance okay this is called as lp metric okay so it can be this p can be any real number okay so now we will be like computing Euclidean distance to form a distant matrix. So we have the same data, height and weight. Okay, and we uh, let's compute the Euclidean distance between B and E. Okay, so we are uh, um, uh, saying 49 minus 85 whole square plus 156 minus 178 whole square to the power of 1 by 2 square root. So when you really compute it, you will be getting the answer 42.2. Okay. So when you do it for all the items, when you do it between A and A, you can do it always zero because uh, between the same points, it's always zero. We, we studied, remember? So B, B and A, it is 68.8. B and B is zero. B and C, it is 70.8. So it goes on. So when you like compute, so when you say A and A, you have to compute between A and A. For A and B, you have to compute A and B, A and C, A and D, A and E, A and F, A G, A H. It goes on. And for B, you have to do B A, B B, B C, B D, B E. So it goes on. So until you have to finish this matrix until H. So after computing the Euclidean distance for all the um, persons height and weight. You can can form a n by one matrix of distance. Okay, so this is called as the distance matrix. So we have computed the distance matrix for the with the help of Euclidean uh, distance formula for the given data set. Okay, so when you see this, you can like find some observations. See, so here the diagonal of this matrix is zero. It's zero because it is like it is associated with the same object. So we we have uh, already studied. A distance of i comma i is always zero so that rule becomes that that was like proved here okay and then when you see b comma a and see b comma a and a comma b is the same so c a is two here a c is 2.0 so it's the same so when you see the whole um matrix it's actually the mirror image. This lower segment is actually the mirror image of the 
upper segment from the diagonal. So then you can say it is symmetrical. So we already studied the distance of IJ is equal to JI, right? So distance of between AB and distance of between BA is same. So you can always like write only the one half of it. Okay, so and this is called as distance matrix. So that is the interpretation that I wrote here. Okay, the distance between B and E is always equal to the distance between E and B. B and E is always equal to E and B. And the distance matrix is always symmetric. And the main diagonal is always zero. Okay, so these are three interpretations that we have like derived out of this distance matrix. So you can always like write down only the lower triangular half or you can like write the upper triangular half also. Usually we follow the lower triangular half of distance matrix usually. Globally, this is the rule that's being followed. Okay. Okay. So guys, any questions so far? Maybe I'll stop this. Share.